so unbelievably beautiful. Yeah, it's a pretty special part of the world again, huh? Well, I feel we say that a lot, but... I know. I just keep thinking, too, like, what more could you ask for? Friends, good like, really friends, good friends. Spear fishing, and diving. And this sunset, like, this nature, and it's so... It's so quiet, like, it's just so still here. I mean, it really is like a desert with aqua water it's everywhere. Bizarre. Yeah, it's so peaceful. Never thought I'd take our boat to a desert. It's kind of a weird one, huh? Ah, bees! The poor bees here are desperate for water and are known to bother cruisers in search of fresh water supplies. There's bees all around me right now. It's disturbing to see them so soon, although it's not a massive swarm, at least. Oh, there are bees everywhere. Made to see Cortez. We got up around noon after the passage, and now we're doing a quick little explore. Up and too crazy, just to check out our surroundings. Pretty neat though. Can't say I've ever taken my boat into a desert before, and it's pretty cool. Just like stunning geography. It's uh, nothing else I've really experienced. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon, and we finally emerged from Calico Skies to explore. After we arrived super early this morning, following a three and a half day passage at sea. After catching up on sleep today, the first thing I wanted to do was get into the water. So we threw ourselves and gear into the dinghy and set out. We've only been out here a few minutes, but since then, the sky has darkened substantially. So quiet too, there's just nothing out here. And the weather came on a dime! Since we set the anchor early today in very different conditions, we're worried about the anchor dragging. It's a race against time in these steep, choppy waves, and it feels like time is standing still. I don't know what's up with this wind. It might drag a little bit, eh? Oh, and 25 knots. Let's see. Well, it is maybe 40 minutes later, and it's pretty different out here now. This one was on longer, the chart plotter down below, and you can see it maxed out at 32.6 knots. That's a pretty good blow. You can also see the wind uh, direction went from northeast to west, southwest. <coughs> Glad our anchor didn't drag while we were away. Gary and Brooke just, ooh, it's wet. Gary and Brooke just radioed us and invited us over for a drink. So we're gonna head over there now that the wind's calmed down and say hello and maybe use their Starlink to get some service because we don't have any here. Um, and yeah, see how their passage was. But we're gonna get tired early today for sure because of the fact that we got in at six in the morning. Um, we did sleep in till like noon, but Bill especially is gonna be tired. So it's probably, it's probably, it's probably not gonna be a big night. No. <laughs> Totally different 30 minutes later though. It's so beautiful here. It's not what I expected. I'm not gonna go on a long thing right now, but like when I saw the pictures of the Sea Cortez, I was like, eh, you all look pretty, but I mean, I guess maybe I'm not 
like a huge cactus desert person or something, but once you kind of see it in person and you see like the aqua water kind of meeting that reddish sand, it's stunningly gorgeous. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really pretty. I'm super pumped, but more on that later. <laughs> Shall we go? Let's do it. Yeah. Look at all those caves up there. Oh my god, there's so much to explore. I can see those little holes in the caves. Yeah, so I see the caves. Yeah, and there's supposedly a hike too that goes like all along here. I can't wait. We're not the only ones that are excited about the Sea of Cortez. Located on the northern part of Mexico's western coast, between the Baja California Peninsula and mainland Mexico, is the Gulf of California, also known as the Sea of Cortez. Jacques Cousteau, the famous French ocean explorer, researcher, conservationist, and pioneer of modern day scuba gear, declared the Sea of Cortez as the aquarium of the world. Today, the sea is still considered to be one of the world's most biologically rich bodies of water, though sadly, overfishing and pollution have stressed the populations of many species. Feels good. That's what we came for, huh? Yeah. 2,400 miles, 2,800 miles ago. Walks and beaches, clear water. Yeah. I wish I had uh, charcoal. Why wonder why it's so splashy. I wonder why it's so foamed up. <laughs> Maybe that thing you ride? Insane thing you ride. <laughs> like, where are we right now? We went from Marina Life to this. Oh, it's been a while since we hiked. Been anywhere. <laughs> it's cool and it's beautiful and it's not that hot. Pretty steep. Incline. Wow. Ooh, is that a steep hill or what? Oh, look at this here. Oh, wow. Oh, this is clear water. Couldn't ask for more. It's pretty nice. Things started out rough, but right now life is very good. Oh my 
God. I got one of those to start. That's good. On my first dog. <laughs> So, um, we're five minutes behind Gary and he's already caught a fish. This is, accomplished. yeah, this is a good sign. Wow. How deep is it? Uh, it all drops off. That was 30 feet maybe at the end of it. Okay, sweet, Gary. So as you can see, I have quite the knife collection I've accumulated over the years. That is why I was particularly excited to receive today this knife set from Komikoto. The knife set comes in a heavy duty ash wood box, which is great for safely storing the knives as well as making a great gift. Let's open them up and check out how they feel. The balance on these knives is incredible. Um, it just feels really good to hold it in your hand. Komikoto knives are made with real Japanese steel and it falls on a tradition that is over 800 years old and using steel to make knives in Japan. Also, each knife is individually inspected. I'm curious to see how they're gonna chop. They feel really sharp, they feel really well balanced in my hand. I had read that these are used by Michelin star chefs around the world. I'm gonna go chop some garlic with it now and see how that works. Wow, that is pretty sharp. It feels effortless. It sounds like a sword. You hear that Japanese steel? Jeez. All right guys, it's time for the big test here. A couple hours later, you can see this beautiful pork tenderloin. Let's see how she cuts. And it looks so well weighted. Oh man, it's like butter. <laughs> yeah. I am super impressed with the cutting ability of this knife. That was so easy. It's also kind of cool because these knives have a lifetime guarantee. You know how hard we are on gear on Calico Skies? Right now, Kamikoto is having a Black Friday sale, and we are happy to offer our viewers $50 off any purchase they make using the discount code Calico Skies. Check the description and box above for more info.
Cooper. Cooper, Bill. Cooper, Bill. Yeah. Do you have a little closer, friend? Good job. Cooper, figures. Tacos. Just tacos, my daughter. crazy and this is gonna sound even crazier but I literally just had like the best dive of my life I saw an octopus that I swam with for maybe five minutes I was kind of scared to go too close to him but I got I had the GoPro on the whole time so I think I think I got it it was beautiful it was like a medium size octopus I would say medium to large and um, an eel. Are those more right eel, the big green one? I don't know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, must I saw a giant eel. I got it on film. It was pretty deep. So I don't know how great the visibility is to me, but it was like, had some sharp teeth. It kind of like, I chased it. I was swimming over it and then it kind of like went into a rock and then like did a U-turn and like put its face in my face. It just kind of freaked me out. Uh-oh, it's like I'm floating away. Oh, that's shit. I think we're both a little tired. We're doing a lot of diving. That amazing dive has us believing in the Sea of Cortez dream again, but that's before we encounter something we've heard rumors of but hadn't expected to deal with right away. The bees of Cortez. Ah, bees. The poor bees here are desperate for water and are known to bother cruisers in search of fresh water supplies. There's bees all around me right now. It's disturbing to see them so soon, although it's not a massive swarm, at least. Oh, there are bees everywhere. Well, we are back from that amazing dive. Um, feeling pretty relaxed. And because Gary and Bill caught so much fish, we're gonna have everyone over and um, I think we're just gonna grill fish. Brooke's making a rice and veggie, Thai rice, I think, and veggie dish for us. And Brian and Kaza are bringing over margaritas. So uh, yeah, we're gonna enjoy a peaceful sunset here. And um, when we were filleting the fish, Bill had a little bit of an accident and cut his finger. So Dr. Brian's going to uh, take a look because it was pretty deep. Yep. Unfortunate. Still have some bees lingering around. Um, Get out, huh? Oh no! <laughs> Blow it. Blow it for Bill. Hey guys! Blow it for Bill. Hola! Hola! Hi. How's it look, Brian? What, what are we working with? To live. We don't need to take the whole finger off. Okay. Just a little bit. Let's get it. Spread it open. Spread it open. Oh, yeah. Oh, that yeah. feels owie. How's that feel? That's a nice band-aid you got brave, there. Be brave, Bill. Be brave. It hurts, Very though. Be brave. Whoa, they're fighting over that fish. See? I think Did you see that one? Look, look, you see you got a fish. <laughs> wow, look, and that bird's gonna try and steal the fish. See? Woo! Oh, here's Sierra. Wow, this is crazy. There's always birds diving and to catch fish around the boat, but there's a lot right now, like more than normal. Isn't that cool, Max? They're hungry. <laughs> so our barbecue is broken, and now we're gonna have to grill the fish here, yeah. but it's okay, because everything's always broken. We'll get a pan fry that day. <laughs> yeah, pan fryer. We have redundancy in cooking. So yeah. I, I would invite you to Della's, but not a Martian's one. We've been cruising for three days. Oh, thanks, honey. Nice 
<laughs> oh. And uh, I was trying to like. So unbelievably beautiful. Yeah, it's a pretty special part of the world again, huh? Mm -hmm. I feel we say that a lot, but. I know. I just keep thinking too, like, what more could you ask for? Friend, good like really friends. good friends. Spear fishing, and diving. I this sunset, like this nature, and it's so, it's so quiet. Like, it's just so still here. I mean, it really is like a desert with aqua water it's everywhere. Bizarre. Yeah, it's so peaceful. Never thought I'd take our boat to a desert. It's kind of a weird one, huh? No. Here we are, though. We're having fresh fish hot fresh today. That Friend, was our plan. Friends we down below it. laughing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was our mission today. Actually, today I really wanted to see an octopus, and I did. We did spend like three or four hours in the water today. <laughs> yeah. These margaritas are going to take us down like, yeah, fast tonight. Well tonight. <laughs> in the best way, though. Yep. Cortez so far is more amazing than we expected, but our first days here have not been without their challenges. When Bill cut his finger yesterday, he threw the knife overboard accidentally, and then earlier that same day he dropped a dive weight overboard. We tried marking the spots in Navionics, but we swung in a 175 degree radius overnight, so finding these items will not be easy. A lot of fish around it. So if that's that, then we know that the next coordinate is the. Uh, so it's more this way, I think. Okay. So you've got it right like around here. Yeah, like right there. I was just going down to film a weird-looking lobster, which was actually a proper fish, and I thought. So here I go. There's been many ups and downs the past couple of days, and it's just too early to say whether the sea is everything we hoped for or not. One thing's for sure, it is definitely a truly beautiful part of the world, and luckily, we'll have more time to get to know it. 